Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today for uh, our webinar of the Filmed e Academy. I'm saying good afternoon, but good evening if you're listening to us from Asia, or good morning if you're listening to, to us from the Americas. Uh, so here on your screen, you can see a program of your week. You can see we have a very busy program. We will be starting with uh, today with Dr. Hassan Galray, Dari, followed up by Dr. Fernandez in a session in Spanish, and we have sessions every single day of the week. So um, just as any session you have joined, you just have to go to, on our, uh, to our website, filmed.com, click on the Pro Access, log in, and then join the webinar. As usual, I'm going to say that all the sessions that we're doing, all the webinars are recorded. So if you have missed something, if you want to rewind something, you can just go on our, on our website and look at all the webinars. So uh, today for this first webinar, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Dr. Hassan Galadari. He is uh, currently an assistant professor of dermatology at the College of Medicine and Health Sciences of the United Arab Emirates University with a main area of interest in cosmetics, dermatology, particularly the field of soft tissue augmentation, where he currently holds a patent. He has lectured in numerous international congresses, published in many peer-reviewed journals, authored book chapters as well as a best-selling book that is called Soft Tissue Augmentation, Principles and Practice which has been translated into Turkish, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, in his spare time, you may find Dr. Galadari spending time with his family, his wife, two sons, and two daughters, or maybe in a cafe reading a comic. But right now, he's sitting safe in his bat cave as everyone else around the world. So uh, thank you very much for being with us today, uh, Dr. Galadari. You can now turn on your microphone. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Charles. Yes, I am currently in the Batcave, as you can see here in the Batcave. That's where I am, uh, you know, keeping safe, uh, hoping that everybody's also uh, trying to keep safe as much as possible during these trying times. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I would like to thank the uh, the team from uh, Filmed, uh, all the organizers, and I would like to thank you all for attending the session. Uh, without uh, you know, without you guys, without your support in terms of wanting to have you know more feedback from uh, from us, really uh, kind of brings us together, uh, creates this uh, form of uh, normalcy that we we are kind of missing. But I am in hopes that it is going to go back to being normal as soon as possible with time. So just for the current present, you know, for the cur current present times. Try to be as safe as possible. Uh, continue washing your hands a lot for at least 20 seconds. That's very, very important. Okay, and please try to be uh, safe. We are here for you. If you do have any questions with regard to this session or any other session, with regard to any of the you know different procedures that we're going to be talking about, what you know, or or anything of that sort, you are. There are many ways that you can get a hold of us now. That since we're doing, we're not doing much. Okay, we're basically answering people's replies back. So we're, we've become much more available in terms of our social media platforms. So if you do have any questions, do please uh, let us know. OK, so uh, without further ado to the first, uh, you know, my talk today is going to be better understanding and answering to uh, the demand of millennials because that belongs to who are our patients. Our patients pretty much consist of a number of people, uh, but the, what composes basically the majority of our patient population groups is going to be the millennials. So it's very important for us to understand that population group, what are its characteristics to fully understand how they can be satisfied with time. So you know, based on the things that we are able to offer them in our practices or in our clinics. Uh, Charles already mentioned this. I do have a little textbook that's out there. It's not even a textbook. It's a little small uh, uh, practical book uh, that's uh, been published in English by Springer and it's been translated into Turkish, uh, Portuguese and Spanish. So people from uh, the Latam areas can really pick up the Portuguese and Spanish versions. Um, they're very good translations in that sense. I've looked at them and they're you know very, very well produced. 
So let's talk about who are our patients based on what are the definitions of the generations that we are able to see. Uh, we're going to start off from the bottom because, you know, that's the first generation over here, which is basically the silent generation. Now, the silent generation, these are, this is a generation, this is a group of people that were born between 1928 to 1945. Okay, so uh, Currently, you know, in 2020, they're probably anywhere between the ages of 75 to 92. Um, so this type of generation, or this is known as the silent generation, because this is a generation that has lived through uh, World War II. Uh, and, you know, the, given the fact that they've lived through many, many hardships, World War II, in addition to the Great Depression during that time, this is a generation that has been hardened given, you know, the, you know, the whole effect of them. So it's not something uh, that they're easily dissuaded. Uh, this is, they are also called probably the greatest generation of all time, okay, in terms of modern history. So that's basically the silent generation. And the reason why they're silent is not because they're quiet, is that because they have a strength in their silence. You know, the minute that they show up, the minute that they're there, their demeanor uh, is basically gives them off as being such. And this is known as the, like as, as I mentioned, it's the silent generation. Then you have the baby boomers. Baby boomers were born anywhere between 1946 to 1964. Currently, right now, given there uh, we are in 2020, they are uh, anywhere between 56 to about uh, 74 years of age. Now, this population group, uh, they're called the baby boomers because during this period of time, that's when uh, the silent generation, you know, they settled down, everything was pretty much set for them, and they started, uh, you know, Know, making babies and that's the reason why they're called baby boomers so that's you know the baby boomers at that point baby boomers are known for having uh, you know uh, blue collar jobs you know they're they're there they they work they've worked hard for to reach where they are uh, their households are pretty much simple and that's basically how they've been set up in addition to uh, the fact that given the fact that they've passed for a period of time uh, baby boomers also have um, had then produced the other generation known as Generation X. And uh, the Generation X are, are people who were born in, from 1965 to 1980. I belong to that generation. And, you know, hopefully a lot of people here are belonging to that generation. Most of the patients that we see in our practice also belong to that generation. Uh, they are known for a generation that used analog phones if you guys remember the you know these roller phones that people used to have in the past and now you know we've got the you know we've got all this digital aspect of things so you know that type of generation this our generation where we used uh, vinyl in addition to disc uh, or sorry not even disc we were talking about cassette players and now we've shifted off to to stream so we're like the lost generation in between we're basically pretty much stuck in that in that era okay we've uh, lived through the greatness of uh, the Beatles and, and at the same time we are trying to live through uh, Justin Bieber okay so, so that that's basically our type of generation okay so we're basically pretty much uh, stuck in that area uh, then you have the millennials. Now, the millennials are the most interesting uh, generation of all the different types of generation. They, these people are born from 1981 to 1996. And uh, currently, what if you, in your practice, or at least in my practice, they comprise probably the majority of the patients that we tend to see. Okay, so most of our patients are considered to be the millennials. And it's very important for us to really understand them to be able to cater our services to them. Generation Z is the newer generation. Now they're called Generation Z because not because they're zombies. Given the current circumstances, you never know what will happen. You know, post-apocalypse or anything of that sort. God forbid. Okay, but you know, hopefully this is not the last generation. They're not called Generation Z because they're the last generation. There will be other generations. We're hoping after the current situation that we are in, and I'm assuming the next generation after this is probably going to be even bigger than you know the baby boomer generation. Given the fact that everybody's stuck at home doing nothing, probably making babies. All right, so if you look at the population breakdown, most of the people that we tend to see, which is, the, you know, the millennials are, you know, consist of, you know, are about 23% of the population group. So you got the baby boomers pretty much high, and then you have the uh, millennials also pretty much high. 
the other population groups are slowly dwindling. So you have the silent generation, they're slowly becoming less and less, given the fact that they've reached a certain age that they've become less. And Generation Z have yet to reach basically their, that type of, you know, if, you know, full population effect that they're basically put down into the census. So let's focus on the millennials because our talk today is going to be mainly on the millennials because this, these are the patients who are going to be seen in our practice uh, more or less commonly. Millennials. So we're dealing with people who were born, as I mentioned earlier, from 81. Some people, some census puts down to 82, but we're talking about generation Y. Worldwide, we are dealing with people who are about 2.3 billion of a population group. So this is this is what millennials are. There's a high chance that if you're walking outside and you see a patient, you see a person, not a patient. Okay, if you're walking outside and you see a person taking selfies, that person is probably a millennial. Okay, so most of the millennials basically live their natural habitat is Instagram or social media. Okay, so that's where they are. They get most of their information. They get most of the news, more or less from the social media platforms. Not, for example, in my generation where we used to read regular newspapers, and even now we read, for example, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, you know, online. But these people here, they deal more or less with other uh, news outlets that are mainly found on social media platforms. Okay, so that's basically how they are. They're very much connected in that sense. How strong are they? They, they are pretty much strong. I mean, if you look at in the United States, 21% control the consumer discretionary purchase purchases. So most of the consumer marketing that have to do with anything of that sort, we're not just dealing with, you know, um, you know, cosmetic procedures with everything from from uh, clothes to uh, cars to, uh, you know, accessories. 21% are, you know, are usually controlled by the effect of uh, the million population. 60% would rather spend money on experiences than material things. So that being said, I mean, they want to go through that experience that the millennials want, you know, they're more, much more carefree. They want to kind of experience the world rather than own things, which is different than the previous generation. For example, Generation X or the baby boomers, they, they kind of define themselves by what they own. You know, we know we've got a big house, we've got a big car, we've got this and so forth. That's how they define themselves. But a millennial, will define themselves more or less with experiences. I have seen the world. I have traveled the world. This is what they will say. They will they will probably live in a small little apartment or even when they're traveling, they're probably be, you know, camping outside, but they are going to say that it's the experience that enriched the process for us. And this is very important because what it does is that it translates into when they come and see you, they want not just to be injected by a product and then they're gone. They want to experience your practice. They want to experience that interaction between you and them. Okay, so it's not just, okay, just do me and I'm gone. No, they, they want to have that experience. So it's very important for us to kind of basically look at them in that way. Okay, so it's extremely, extremely important. These Pay, you know, you know, other characteristics, for example, will, are very much, con they're very much connected. Take, for example, the Korean, Korean millennial moms, 91% of them have access to a mobile device. They're always online. Okay, so that's basically how they are. All right, so it's very, very important that's just to understand them. So what are their characteristics? The first characteristic of a millennial is that they are multitaskers. They are multi-skilled leaders. If, you know, and I will call them leaders. I mean, there are leaders in their fields, but then they're also multitaskers. They're able to talk on the phone, cook, you know, write an email to their boss. At the same time, you know, probably you know, babysit, okay, or change diapers. OK, and at the same time are able to do all of them at the same time. So that's basically how they're doing it. And they're they're never satisfied with just one thing. They, they're going to switch more or less from one thing to the other all in the same day. That's how they're, they are. That's one of their characteristics, which is different than the previous generation in which they would say, oh, for example, on Friday or on a specific day on, you know, is going to be it's a family day. And that's what we are going to be doing. No, a, a, a millennial is able to do family and at the same time do work, and at the same time do other things all on the same day. That's basically how they work in that sense. The reason for this is that they want to create change, and they use their capabilities and their strengths in realizing the digital platforms that they are able to utilize to spread that message to their community. Okay, and they're able to, you know, to talk about this. 
Given the fact, however, that they are multitaskers also has a negative connotation. They are easily distracted, extremely easily distracted. For example, in my case, in my practice, every time I would walk in and I know that a millennial is going to be a millennial patient that I'm seeing, the first thing I realize is that if they're sitting down, they're not sitting down waiting for me. They're sitting down waiting for me with their phone, probably texting or chatting. Believe it or not, sometimes what I will do is that I will do the treatment and they're Snapchatting the treatment at the same time while I'm doing it. Okay, so they're very much connected in that in that sense with social media. It's, it's very hard to, to resist. However, they're easily distracted. If they come in and they tell you that they want this to be done and you're going like, you want your lips to be done, but your lips are already huge because we're talking about lips because the millennials are known for their big, large lips and voluminous effects. If you tell them that you know the lips are large and so forth and all that, they might not like it. So you have to distract them with something else. You can tell them, listen, you know, your lips are fine, but how about we do the cheeks? I believe if we do the cheeks, it'll work fantastic for you. So you, they, and then they will look, oh yeah, you're right. You know, I, I definitely need my cheeks done. So you can easily distract them. And you when you're talking about easily distract them, I'm talking about in a positive way. Okay, so you really kind of make sure that you don't manipulate the whole, you know, uh, you know, consultation process, but at the same time, you distract them to things that may not be necessary for them to perform and to things that may actually be of importance. For example, in, in, the, in the film and stuff that we have, basically all the different protocols that we're using uh, and, you know, and CTF or so forth, if they're coming in and they want, for example, a lip treatment to be done and you find that the lips are already fine, they don't need anything, you can tell them, but, you know, let's do the NCTF. It causes this revitalization, the rejuvenation effect, and they go, they will get interested. They will definitely get interested in this because, and I will mention later on, they are very much into the tech aspect of things. They will able to be, they will read into what they, what you've basically looked or what you, what you're discussing them. They will look at the reviews and then boom, they're going to start actually following through based on your consultation. So it's very, very important to distract them, but to distract them in a proper way because they can easily find out whether you're fooling them or not. They're curious. They make more or less, which is very, very, very important in terms of uh, a, a successful consultation process. They make fewer bad decisions. They're not going to come in. They, they will, you know, they want something that will cause them to become have to having a bad side effect. The reason for this is that unlike, for example, Generation X, who may not have the capabilities of looking at reviews or looking at certain information, all they want to do is that, you know, they've heard about cheek fillers and they're going to be coming in for cheek fillers. You know, millennials have done their homework. They will tell you that I want this to be done and that to be done. And sometimes if they're also very savvy, they will tell you how it was done because there's a lot of like, you know, they're connected to this, you know, YouTube channels and all these media channels that will show them how things are done properly. OK, sometimes that's a good thing and a bad thing because there, there might be a little clash between you and them because they think they know more than you in that sense, and they want that treatment to be done in a certain way that they've seen online, which you don't do in, in, that, in the same way. For example, a needle versus a cannula technique. But if you are able to reach that midpoint, it really provides a much better cosmetic and aesthetic results if you are able to kind of reach a compromise with them. They're a little self-centered, okay? They will always talk about how unique they are, you know, how they are basically, you know, how, you know they, they, they're more or less, they will tell you that, you know, we, we're street. I'm not, I'm not, we're not talking about they're narcissistic, but they're more self-centered. They care about how it is. So it's basically me and the whole world around them. And they have basically this, I am good enough spirit. Okay. They will always think of themselves. This is, you know, this is perfect for me. They may not think, they may not want to be perfect, but they're happy with the way that they are. That self-centered also provides a little bit of a self-confidence kind of effect. So it's very important in that sense. They have this whole being yourself kind of thing. That uniqueness is important in a cosmetic procedure because sometimes they will come to you and they don't want themselves to be changed into somebody else. Generation X or maybe the previous generation will tell you, I would want to look like this. A lot of the millennials want to retain their natural look. So it becomes very important here because when it comes to injecting, you want to retain how they look like naturally. 
Okay, so the whole less is more kind of mentality is very important given the fact of this characteristic, the self-centered, self-confident characteristic. They do require, however, instant gratification. And that's very, very important because, you know, these uh, this population group were brought up by baby boomers and the baby boomers have always given them constant praise, always constant praise. You are fantastic. You're really good. You're very good. So even though you might perceive them as you know, this is not something to be recognized for, but they look at that as something that provides them with gratification. How is that translated into your own practice? It translates into the fact that whatever procedure that you perform, they want to see the results now. So it's very important for you to kind of realize this. If you start telling them that you're going to see the results after a couple of times of doing certain procedure, they might feel a little iffy with you. So you want to make sure that whatever it is that you provide for them really provides them that instant gratification. If it's, you've not completed the whole protocol and you're only just starting, make sure that the first impression leaves them with a bang because that's very important for them to carry forward, for you to allow to have them come over. You can't tell them you will see the result after the sixth session. No, the, you have to, that first initial visit should give them a huge boost so that they, they are able to kind of come back and see you. Now, they're also, as I mentioned, very, very well connected. If you make them happy, they are definitely going to refer you to other people. OK, especially when it comes to social media, sometimes you get referred even with them. So like they will bring in a friend and that friend is, you know, they, they just brought them in because they want a companion with them when they're doing a procedure and they connect with each other so well that that friend while sitting down because they saw their friend getting injected, say, for example, or having a procedure done and they're happy, they will probably do the same thing at the same time. It's different, for example, than Generation X, who are a little conservative. They will say, no, I want to go back. I want to do a little my homework and so forth. No, while you're seeing that friend, her friend who's sitting down just watching is probably on her phone, checking your reviews, checking how things are done, and she might say, boom, I want to do it now. So it's that type, that whole practice here when it comes to the millennials, especially if they come in packs, two or three in your own practice at the same time, make sure that you see them in the same office because that person sitting next to them is a potential patient for you. You don't want to lose them. You don't want that patient to go out and tell them, oh, you know, it was such a good experience. No, you show them how good of an experience it was while that patient is sitting with their friend together. So that's very important. What they want is that they want transparency. So if you are going to be providing treatments for them, you make sure that your treatments actually work. If you tell them that my treatment is going to make you look like this and it's going to do that and it's going to do this and it doesn't, then you, you know you are definitely going to be blacklisted by them and you may never even see them because they're very very notorious in terms of doctor shopping okay if they don't like you they're just going to jump off to another another practice right across the street and you want to make sure that you capture those type of patients okay you don't want them to kind of go away so you have to be authentic whatever it is that you're going to advertise yourself especially for example using your own social media platforms try to be as authentic as possible don't try to kind of make things up that you are the greatest or the of the great well you probably never have done it for example if you not specialize in nose injections and they come in and they want their noses to be injected just don't show off that you're able to do that okay and um, you know even though you might get a good result but it's not a fantastic result that they like if you're not authentic enough they're, they're going to be able to realize that very, very quickly, even in terms of the treatments. For example, if you provide them and you tell them that, oh, this I'm using this laser machine and this machine is going to provide you with a glow on your face. And if that if they don't achieve that glow in the first session because, you know, that instant gratification effect, they'll say like, all right, we're out of here. Okay, we're not going to come back and see you anymore okay, because you're not authentic. And don't use medical jargon. Don't talk to them about, I am going to inject the mid epidermal layer because of the keratinocyte. Don't do that. Try to make it as simple as possible for them. OK, don't use any of these medical jargons or these buzzwords that people tend to use. Try to combine treatments. That's the beauty of these things. If they if they come to you and you tell them, oh, your treatment is going to be a hyaluronic acid filler, you're going to go, that's it. No, you need to combine treatments. These patients here want that combination. They know that you cannot build a house with just a hammer. So you're 
tool is not you don't have one tool you have to have a whole portfolio and the nice thing about the film is, uh, is that it has a huge portfolio in which you can combine the cosmeceuticals you can combine the nctf and you also can combine the fillers if you're able to do that and you're able to do that successfully that's when you achieve a proper patient retention okay but if you just tell them oh i'm just going to inject you with this that's it you're done they're going to start feeling a little bit iffy because they're not used to this whole uh, one tool that fixes everything for them. Well, who? OK, so that's basically, you know, the characteristics of millennials. And, you know, if there are any questions there, Charles, I mean, I'm more than happy to answer them or, the, or else we'll just continue on with the famous millennials. Anything that you see that uh, is of importance or any questions from uh, the so people? So far, we can continue. We, we will go with this at the end. OK, perfect. OK, so let's talk about famous millennials. Now, a lot of people are going to say like, well, I don't understand who, who are millennials. So I got to show you people who are famous so you can say like, ah, yes, you know, that we belong to the same generation. Uh, first one that I see over here that you guys are able to see is Mark Zuckerberg. He's on the left upper uh, upper hand corner. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, of course, is the CEO and founder of Facebook. OK, look at if you've seen the movie Social Network and you've seen how Mark Zuckerberg works, he's your classic characteristic millennial. OK, so, you know, they're multitasker, smart, a uh, little needy. OK, uh, knows what he wants, but at the same time, you know, just kind of jumps from one place to the other because of that. So that's basically one of them. Then you have uh, Kylie Jenner is also considered to be a millennial. And remember, she is the first I don't know, it's like the first self-made billionaire or something. I think maybe self-proclaimed billionaire, but she is probably the only uh, billionaire that only millennial billionaire that's self-made. OK, based on like, you know, the things that she's able to own and so forth. And all how she does it is basically through her social media platform outlets. OK, so that's basically kind of Jenner. And the, the person that you're seeing on the left lower hand corner is uh, Ana de Armas, which is an actress. She's a Cuban actress, so you're going to be seeing more of her because she's the next Bond girl. OK, she also appeared in Knives Out, uh, the movie, and uh, she's currently dating the uh, Ben Affleck. So if you guys uh, know about the her, that's basically uh, the fa very famous millennials. What are the aspirations in terms of beauty that such millennials actually want? When it comes to the female aspects or uh, of basically what they're looking in terms of uh, or aspiring to be in terms of beauty, their eyebrows is usually raised. It's usually very well defined. That's how they like it. Their cheeks is full, has a lateral projection. As you can see here, that's this, uh, this is a picture of Huda Beauty and you can see her cheeks, you know, very well defined in that area. The lips usually follows a natural fullness of anywhere between one to two. OK, meaning the upper lip is slightly smaller than the lower lip. Usually one, it used to be one to one point six. Recent studies have shown that patients actually like it if it's one to two. OK, in which so the lower lip is slightly, uh, it's basically double the size of the upper. Uh, and it's very important for you to discuss uh, the injection of the upper lip, OK, because sometimes a lot of patients are confused that the upper and the lower lip should be exactly the same. However, those are different based on ethnicity. But in terms of a Caucasian person that you're seeing, it's usually one to two. Could be is usually a little bit less in your Asian population group and one to one in your African uh, group. So uh, the chin is also slightly pointed with an outward projection. So that's how they usually like it. The jawline is also well defined with a mandibular angle. So that's basically the beauty aspirations for uh, millennials. That's what they consider to be beautiful because they see all these social media stars. For example, the beauty is known uh, as being uh, a social media a guru. Currently, her wealth actually is about 1.2 billion. Billion. That's what her comp company, uh, the Huda Beauty Company, is uh, is basically kind of uh, looked at or basically valued. So when it comes to the lips, the nice thing about the whole film med portfolio is that it, it allows us to either fall through with the millennial population group or with the uh, older, more mature group, such as the Generation X or maybe even the baby boomers. So you might use, for example, art filler lips to provide more of a volume and strong enhancement for your patients as compared to uh, the art filler lip soft in which you would want to kind of provide it for patients who are slightly uh, more mature. Uh, that's that's the nice thing. So you definitely need to have, for example, uh, different products for your different patient population groups. So you need to kind of put them all together in that sense and realize that there are differences for this. A, a millennial, if you inject her with art filler lip soft, she will look at her lips and she's going to say, I don't see it. 
uh, this is not what I expect. So you have to make sure that the product that you're using is the correct one to provide them the right, uh, basically, you know, or the proper, uh, you know, successful visit. And another thing that, you know, you have to want to kind of also think about because, you know, the millennials are going to be coming to you is the medical highlighting thing. Think of yourself in uh, whenever it is that you're seeing a patient, think of yourself basically as a makeup artist, okay? But you are, instead of using brush, or, or any of the, you know, for example, all the different types of makeup that we tend to use, you're actually using your other tools such as needles and cannulas. Think about doing that. All you're trying to do is change the shadowing of the lights and how light is reflected on those type of patients to create a three-dimensional effect. The way that I tend to do my research when it comes to such patients is it's not usually through journals or textbooks. It is important to do that if you're looking at anatomical aspect of things. Okay, so if you want to learn about this, you have to look at the anatomy to understand to avoid the danger zones. But believe it or not, when it comes to the medical highlighting effect, especially if I'm dealing with patients who are millennials, I look, my, my, you know, my, and I'm saying it here in front of everybody, I would look at, you know, for example, magazines such as Vanity Fair, okay, or Cosmopolitan, okay, because you want to see how the makeup artists created the person's face using makeup so that you're able to do the exact same thing using cannulas. So you know exactly, for example, that the zygomatic arch has to be lifted up using a certain effect, okay, so that it has a shadow effect that's caused by that, you know, uh, you know, by that, by that, you know, contouring effect of makeup, but you're doing it with your fillers, okay? So it's very important for us to kind of realize this. And there are a few places in which, you know, they're considered to be strategic zones for right light reflecting. And these zones will include, for example, the tail of the eyebrow, because that's where, you know, there's a little curvature that's found. Uh, the cheekbones, especially the zygomatic arch in females. If you look at the, the lady and you look at the, on the left side and look at her on the right side, if, there, if that effect of light, that shadowing effect, really, if it's not there, it just, you know, everything looks flat. So you want to recreate that by, the, by creating basically more of a light reflection. Uh, the lip area area is also considered to be one of that convex areas in which you want to provide a little bit of volume and also finally the chin area. So that's basically, these are the things that you're able to do when it comes to medical highlighting. And as I mentioned earlier, less is more for these millennials. These millennials, you know, that you can't have just one product. You can't have a portfolio made up of just one HA formulation filler and tell them this is can be used for everything. You need to have something that is going to be specific for the, the cheeks that will provide volume. You need something that's specific for the lips. And in this case over here with, with Art Filler, the nice thing is that you, only, you don't have just one. You have two for the lips that's mainly specific for that area. You need something basically for the chin. Okay, for example, that's, you know, here you would use Art Filler volume. So you need basically all these different filler ranges with different rheological properties that are specific for certain parts, okay? Because if you ap apply basically the methodology of less is more, you're able to kind of recreate that whole, uh, the medical highlighting effect, okay? It's through the effect of shadowing, okay? So it's very, very important basically for us to realize this because that's what millennials want, okay? And we will mention why less is more is going to be key is that because they don't want to pay as much Okay, so you have to kind of utilize the right products in the right location because if you don't, you end up using more products if it's the wrong product and then the patient is not going to be very happy with the price that they're going to be getting the minute they walk to your reception. When it comes to male beauty, botulinum toxin, of course, is still remains the number one thing that we tend to use in our male patients. And in this case here, we, um, I'm putting Robert Pattinson. For, you know, it's unfortunate. It will be the first, um, you know, first time a millennial plays Batman. So, you know, shoot me now. But, you know, this is this is the end of times for me. OK, I don't I, I don't know what to say after this. OK, so that's the you know, that's that's him. OK, you probably have known him from uh, his days in Twilight. So when he played a bat, now he's playing a Batman. OK, and given the current situation now, I don't know what, you know, I don't know. What, I don't want to talk about bats anymore. Uh, when it comes to fillers, it's very important for us to kind of realize that in men, we have to avoid the areas such as the zygomatic arch, okay? So we don't do that. We mainly kind of inject more or less more on the medial aspect. The chin is usually squarish, extends from the uh, oral commissures, 
Eyes should uh, overcorrection underneath the eyes. The temples can be injected, especially if they're very, very thin. I mean, now currently he looks better, but if you remember him in Twilight, he was extremely thin. He glittered, okay, but he was very, very thin during that time. And of course, lips and forehead are usually not as commonly injected in males as compared to females. So if you look at our own portfolio of what we have in terms of art filler and what we're able to kind of combine is that in cases such as here, to masculinize a, a person, uh, areas such as the temples, the cheekbones, the chin, and the mandibular angle may be injected. And what we tend to use is art filler volume for those areas specifically, because it really provides us with uh, a masculinized effect if they're injected to recreate a masculinized look. And then of course, to change the skin quality, we were able to also add our NCTF in addition. And I've noticed a lot of our male patients now are currently interested in you know having a, a rejuvenated look okay it's not just basically a rugged masculine look they also want their skin to be a little bit more on the softer side they don't want to you know they don't want to have these fine lines they want to get rid of them so in terms of the skin quality as it's becoming much more uh much more popular to actually also use nctf in the past it used to be a little bit less but now they're slowly starting to pick it up and our male uh male population group especially in my practice here at least is slowly growing and at the same time it probably has the most potential of growth as compared to the females the females are pretty much saturated right now and the growth is minimal okay but in, in males that's the areas in which you really want to try to focus on especially when it comes to the millennials so what are the trends the trends for the our millennial population they're usually younger mainly in their late 20s early 30s you know the, your millennial now is probably because we're in 2020 is probably going to be hitting 39, 40, I've missed the millennial boat. Uh, they are very specific with what, with what they want. They will tell you, a patient will come to you and they will tell you, I want my lips done, okay? Or I have dark circles underneath the eyes that I want them done. Or I would want a highly defined chin and jawline. They are extremely specific and they want instant results, okay? So they want to see the stuff that you've done for them and they want to see the results immediately straight up after. Okay, they don't want to wait for too long and pricing is going to be an issue. And because pricing is going to be an issue with the millennials, because remember, these are people who are, you know, who are never satisfied. They jump from one place to the other. Maybe they also they jump from one job to the other. They're not really very satisfied with, you know, whether they are on a personal or professional aspect of things. So pricing may be an issue and they will always talk to you about price. They will always try to haggle the price and say, can we have it a little bit cheaper? Can we do this? Can we do that? And in this case here, you require a portfolio of products rather than just having one product where you can inject it everywhere, okay? So that portfolio allows for a minimal amount to be injected to have a maximum effect. Hence the term less is more, okay? So that's basically the trends of the millennials. So what are the future directions for the current population given the present circumstances? Now we're living in a present circumstance but we are going to get out of this present circumstance. What are the future directions for the current population? Baby boomers, okay? So baby boomers, if you look at them, this is on the you know, right upper hand, that's who they are. They will become much more engaged online. Okay, so these baby boomers who probably never even owned an iPhone, or maybe they have an iPhone, but they only use it to call people, are gonna become much more engaged online. They will use more, so that's why it's very important to you as a practice, is to utilize more of your social media platform to capture that population group. That population group in the past, you now everything's gonna be looked at pre-2020 and post-2020. And pre 2020, that population group, the only way that they would come into your practice is through word of mouth, or if they were referred by a very good friend. Now they will come into your practice, given the fact your social media plot to cap your, your, your social media, because now they're becoming much more engaged, given the fact that they're going to be more online. They're spending more time online now. So it's very, they are going to become tech savvy. They're going to ca you know, catch up very, very soon. Online reviews will play an extremely important role to capture those patients and telemedicine and virtual consultations. Some of them will actually will tell you. Um, you know, they will they will want to have a virtual consultation with you before coming to your office. In the past, these patients never knew what a virtual consultation was. They will just show up in your practice. Now they may say like, oh, can we have, for example, something on uh, Microsoft Teams or can we have something like a, a consultation on Zoom before coming in? OK, remember, the, this is a pop patient population group that only use this. They use an iPhone 
just to call people up, okay? Generation X, and this is the breakfast club. I belong to this generation, okay, which is which is a good and a bad thing. I believe this generation is the, the lost generation. We are going to, we've lived through uh, many, many things. We've lived through the dot-com uh, bubble. We've lived through 9-11. Uh, we've lived through uh, basically the crash of 2008, okay? Now we've reached a certain point that we said enough is enough for us. Okay, we're looking for succession plans. We're going to focus more or less, this type of generation now is going to focus more or less on giving back to the community. Okay, they're going to focus more on teaching, on writing, and coaching, and speaking. That's the reason why I'm here. I'm speaking. I'm, I'm giving away the baton. Okay, that people can carry it and carry the torch later on because I'm giving up after this. But if you do see them on there in your practice, they are going to, they may not focus because now they're focused more on matters rather than personal care. Because remember, these population, population group, given the present circumstances, post 2020, are going to be focused more on other things, okay, than basically their own personal care. So a successful engagement with them requires you to perform a much more focused consultation. You have to take them through this journey if they come in and see you. That's why here, protocols are going to be very beneficial for these type of patients okay so they will come you have to have a protocol for them to be to have a successful you know consultation process so don't lose this generation you still want them okay but you really have to ha hold their hands and tell them this is what needs to be done okay and the nice thing about the effects of like what we have in terms of film med and so forth is that they have certain protocols and these type of patient population groups work better when it comes to a protocol for them. Millennials, they, now their millennials are going to shift their priorities more towards more stable personal and professional environments. Okay, given, you know, uh, we're talking about post 2020, they are still going to be the most engaging generation in terms of cosmetic procedures. They will still come to see you the most. Okay, so we're not talking about, you know, the, they are the ones who are where as before, they're still going to be coming in terms of cosmetic procedures. Now, because the priorities have shifted, they will have a trend to more doctor loyalty versus doctor shopping. Okay, so if you are able to capture them and talk to them, and now that you've realized all the different characteristics that they have, and you're able to kind of focus on them in that sense, you're able to really create very loyal patients who will see you again and again and again. OK, they're not going to, you know, they, this patient population group will not probably after post 2020 will not jump from one doctor to the other where they will try another doctor for or so forth. Now, price, because we mentioned they are always going to try to try to negotiate with price. They're going to try to haggle with it is still going to be an issue given the emerging circumstances that we're going to be coming out from. But the negotiations may be less. And the beauty of what we are doing is that we are trying to recreate the whole less is more mentality. And this is highly successful when it comes to the film uh, you know, portfolio and the, all the film protocols. But because what we are doing here is that we tell them, them that we're, we're basically injecting you optimally I don't want to, I, I hate using less and more. You know, it, it's, we're injecting you optimally to get the best results, okay? And that's basically what they will like. In this case, what happens here, you become much more efficient when it comes to your treatment. And because you are efficient, you also become less costly as compared to other, uh, you know, in the past, for example, or other practices. So with this, I'd like to thank Everybody, these are my uh, handles for uh, social media. If you do have any questions, please feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, I would be very happy to answer all your questions, whether they're here, whether there are, you know, anything else you're able to do that with me. Thank you again for listening. I, I probably understand that I've gone a little bit beyond, but hopefully the session was of interest. And hopefully after uh, this whole post 2020, Hey Hassan, uh, we have lots of connection. Can you just reconnect your microphone? Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for this very interesting presentation. I think this is really the, the future for uh, for everyone. So uh, so thank you again for, for that. Uh, so yes, indeed, we do have a few questions. Um, so we have someone here who is asking 
um, with which approach are you going to win the loyalty of a millennial patient according to all you just said about their mindset? Uh, well, with which approach? I mean, I think the most mo the most important approach is to try to really be uh, as transparent as possible. I mean, you know, we're dealing with we're dealing with a patient population group here that is different than the previous ones. The previous population group, you know, would just trust what you say. So for you here, for to to become a successful way to a kind of uh, you know be able to retain such patients, is try to be as transparent as possible, and at the same time always to provide them that gratification because remember these patients want to come they want to see the results before they walk out the door okay so you can't tell them oh i'm injecting you after two or three days you're going to see the results no they want to see it now so it for me at least it takes me uh, some time for them for me to tell them that w when i use a neurotoxin like botulinum toxin i would have to tell them that it takes a few days for it to work and they, they're not happy they want to see it now so it's very important for us to do that so be transparent and always to kind of keep in mind that they want that instant gratification effect. So that's basically what I would look at. All right, super, thanks. Uh, now we have a very interesting question uh, from Leandro. He is asking, do you have any suggestions about how to do nice virtual consultation in order to provide uh, right VT assessment? Because it's quite hard to give much information without the live consultation. Absolutely. So a, a live, uh, you know, a, a live assessment is going to be the most important thing, no matter what we do. But a lot of our patients still would want us to kind of have that virtual, uh, virtual consultation. So a lot of patients, for example, would send me a picture and they would ask me, what do you think I would need? It's, if they send you a picture, I would recommend that you do not reply with just a picture. You would want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation in which, for example, you use a platform that's secure. It could be Zoom or it could be uh, Microsoft Teams, something that's secure in that sense. Uh, and by doing so, you're able to kind of tell them and ask them, I want you to turn around, turn this way. So you're able to kind of see them in motion and mobility. That's very, very important in that sense. But you always, whenever it is that you see them virtually, don't tell them that you are going to achieve this result by doing this. Always remind them that a proper consultation is going to be necessary for you to get a final feel of what they require. For example, if you see them and they, you know, given the fact that they're, the lighting that they're, they're going to be seen, seeing you in is going to be poor, there will be more shadows, for example, and you might tell them, oh, listen, you need this and you probably need more than usual. But when they come in and see you and it's under proper standardized lightning, you know, light, lighting situation, you would tell them, no, you, you don't need as much. You're not, you don't look as bad as, as you actually think. So never promise them anything in a virtual consultation tell them what what may be necessary to you know the the basically the general thing that needs to be done but a proper consultation is going to be key once you see them uh, uh, you know live in your own uh, clinic in your own practice all right thank you very much um so now we have another interesting questions uh about what you said before earlier uh, someone saying i have millennial patient patients who come to me because they want to look like their Instagram filter. How can I handle this to make them going back to reason and accept my advices and avoiding they go to see another, another doctor? That, that, all right, that, that's, that's a good question. So we talked about how millennials are. Now, uh, they are, you can easily distract them by something else. Don't send them away unless you feel very strongly that these type of patients are like red flag patients. And when I say red flag patients, these are patients who are never satisfied. They have some form of body dysmorphic disorder, you know, and they, they're patients who will come back and tell you, I don't like the results no matter what you do. OK, so those type of patients, you really have to kind of wean them out first and then make sure that the patient that you're seeing gets a, a, a proper uh, you know, consultation. So those type of patients who come in and show you, for example, a picture, you tell them, you tell them, listen, everybody's created differently. You are different. You know, for example, Angelina Jolie's lips work well for her face. But if your face, for example, is if her face, for example, is smaller than Angelina's and you create that lips, that's, there's complete disproportionate of it, then it just does not look natural. And then you tell them if you don't want to look natural, which is fine, OK, I would then you can you can inject if that's the, that's the type of doctor you would. But if you're the type of doctor who only wants to create naturalness, 
you tell them, you tell them, listen, I, I these are my principles. I will not do this because you will not look natural. And I like to do that because remember, these patients are your walking, you know, advertisements. They will always, people will look at them. They will say like, oh, listen, I want, you know, who did your lips? And if you did a bad job, they're not going to, people are not going to come in and see you. So if you, you can say no, you can definitely say no. And they can go to another person and that person can do them and let that person take, you know, handle the situation. But my recommendation, you hold on to your principles, you know, show them or tell them, oh, listen, why are you focused about your lips? You know, I, you know, underneath the eyes, there's a little tree trough that you have. How about doing something for the tree troughs? Trust me, if you're going to do the tree troughs, bang, it's going to look much different. And that's how you basically kind of distract them with something that actually is necessary for them to do. Because if, you know, some people here, they want something done. They don't know what it is. So it could be the lips, it could be something else. So if you tell them that we're going to do this, we're not going to send you away, we're going to do this, and you're going to get some benefit out of it, then they're going to really like you. Or for example, if a patient comes to you and you tell them, listen, uh, you know, your skin is very dull. Let's do some, you know, a little bit of NCTF. Let's put you on an NCTF protocol that you, so you can get a good benefit in terms of the way that your skin feels. And you tell them this and, you know, you put them through the channels and they like the results. They will completely forget why they came to see you initially, whether it's their lips, whether it's their chin, whether anything of that sort. Thank you very much, Hassan. It's been really wonderful to have you. And uh, it's been super interesting to see your approach to, to, to the millennials. So uh, for everyone, uh, again, this has been recorded. So uh, if you have missed anything, it will be uh, it will be available on our website, filmnet.com. And, uh, and remember, we have lots of sessions, as you can see today, and uh, still one today and other ones this week. So uh, thank you again for participating. Maybe a last word from you, Hassan. Uh, no, thanks a lot. For, thanks a lot for joining in. I thank again uh, the folks from FilmMed for having me. It's always a pleasure and uh, hopefully I get to see you guys later on in the future. But for, for the time being, stay safe, stay home, stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.